Amen. God bless you. God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank God for all of you that are out there today. I tell you, the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. His mercy. Amen. I thank God that it's made new every single morning. I want to thank God for all of you today. And I pray that God has blessed you to have a meaningful, intentional week. I pray that he has given you the type of week that makes you just want to continue to run on and live for him. Today, we have a good lesson today in our Sunday school. It's called Daniel's vision of change. Daniel had a vision that things would not always be the way that they were in the current state that he was in and the way that the things would change. Things would not be the same way that they were in the past, that the things that he was used to. Amen. So I thank God today for this lesson because it gives us hope that one day everything that has gone wrong, everything in this world that makes no sense, all of these systems that are set up to have us fail and have you fail, one day they will change. Amen. So before we get into it, our lesson is coming from Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 through 14 amen before we get into that y'all already know we'll go ahead and pray this thing in and we'll get right into the lesson gracious god in heaven we thank you for another opportunity to be able to learn of your word we thank you oh god for the revelatory word that you give us god i pray that you would continue to impart into us your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. God, we give you praise, glory, and honor today. We pray for those that are watching that may be hurting, may be bound. God, we pray that you would heal every womb and that you would break every chain in the name of Jesus. We consider it done even now. And everybody said together, amen. Amen. God bless you today. Daniel's vision of change. So by the end of this lesson, here's what our aim for change is. By the end of this lesson, we will recognize that God judges the just and the unjust. It's not just you and I, not just the people that are believers, but he judges the just and the unjust and trust that he has a future in mind for his people and commit to godly living. How many of you are willing in order to receive the blessings from the Lord? How many of you are willing to commit to godly living, commit to a different standard of living, commit to a different way of living. I know that I am. I know that if you want to get different results, you have to do something different. If you want God to move in ways that he has never moved in your life, you have to do something different. And it starts with your living. It starts with how you live. Do you, are you living for God or are you living for man? Are you living for your girlfriend? Are you living for your boyfriend? Are you living for your family or are you living for God? Amen. So that is our aim for change today. So uh, I'll go ahead and read the first couple of scriptures, verses 9 through 12, and then we'll go ahead and expound on it. So here's what it says in New Living Translation. As I watched, oh, I'm sorry, I watched as thrones were put in place and the ancient one sat down to judge. His clothing was as white as snow and his hair was like the purest wool. He sat on a fiery throne with wheels blazing fire. And the river of fire was pouring out, flowing from his presence. Millions of angels ministered to him. Many millions stood to attend to him. Then the court began its session and the books were open. I continued to watch because I could hear the little horns boastful speech. I kept watching until the fourth beast was killed and his body was destroyed in the fire. The other three beasts had their authority taken from them, but they were allowed to live a little while longer. Amen. So here is David. He's giving us a vision of what he's seeing. David is the fourth of the greater prophets. David, I mean, so I'm David. I'm saying, David, y'all forgive me. I'm this early. Daniel. <laughs> Amen. Was the fourth of the greatest prophets. And we see here Daniel is giving us a vision of what he's seeing, about how he's seeing the ancient of days in, uh, in, in pure white, how there's millions. Think about it. Millions of angels are ministering to him. Think about how great God is that millions of angels can minister to him all at the same time. And Daniel, as we know, his name simply means judgment of God. Amen. And anytime you are a prophet, 
more than likely, if you are a if you are a prophet from God, you are bringing judgment from God. You oftentimes are God's mouthpiece, letting the people know that judgment is coming. So Daniel is telling us today, he wants us to continue to be faithful because faithful, being faithful to God is an excellent characteristic that all of us need to have. David was promoted in King Darius's court, not so much because he was faithful to the king, but he was faithful to God. And because he was faithful to God, God allowed him to have favor with man. He allowed him to have favor even when they were trying to get him to eat the king's food. Daniel said, no, he said, I want to eat something different. He said, I refuse to deviate from what I ate in my homeland. He said, give me what the Lord is. Give me the Lord's diet. Give me the Lord's regimen. Amen. So we'll talk about this for a second. Now, listen to the vision that Daniel is describing for us here in this book. It says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit. So by the way, David wrote this verse. One has to wonder this simple thing whether he was considering turning away. In these scriptures, some scholars are wondering because of how David wrote this, was he considering turning his back on God? Perhaps he was tired and spending the night in the lion's den, but then he says that he watched until the thrones were put in place. Because keep in mind, the scriptures that we're reading took place after David had spent that long, gruesome, tiresome night in the lion's den. So the thrones were set up for everyone who was in power. And there were four beasts. Somebody say four. There were four beasts right there. They were men in opposition to God's kingdom. That's what those four beasts represented. And Christ and God the Father, Daniel continued to watch until the ancient of days sat down. Now, you know that when you're in court, everybody's talking and kind of going on about their business. Some may be standing, whatever the case is. But when the judge walks in the room, everybody has to be silent. Everybody has to stand for the judge. We stand for the judge as the judge sits down. Amen. And when the judge sits down, then court is in order. You'll hear the bailiff say court is now in session. Put your cell phones away, whatever the case is. So while he was watching, Daniel noticed that the judge, the king, the ancient of days, God himself came in and he sat down at the throne. So listen to this. So while he was watching these court proceedings, because each and every one of us is going to have our day in court where God is going to judge the good, the bad, the ugly, the things you thought that were, were, were swept under the rug, he's going to judge it all. So while David was watching the proceedings, he noticed that the deeds of the dead were recorded in the books and they would not be judged and they would be judged according to the contents. So there's the book of life, the book of deeds. The book of deeds is recording every single thing that you've done, whether it be bad, whether it be good. The books are going to be open and you and I, me and you, you and me, we will be judged according to the contents of that book. So Daniel took the time out to write that there was one particular beast in particular that was terrible. It was the it was the fourth beast. He was powerful. He was dreadful. He was strong and he had great iron teeth and the beast had 10 horns. And when Daniel was watching the court proceedings, a sound captured his attention. There was a sound that went off. It was one of the beast's horns that was boasting arrogantly. Can you imagine boasting arrogantly before God when you were standing before him being judged? At that point, I would think that no matter who you are, you would humble yourself. You would probably be trembling just because you don't know what's about to happen. You know in your life you've made some mistakes and you don't know how God is going to react once he starts reading off everything that you've done. But this fourth beast in particular, one of his horns started boasting arrogantly. And guess what happened? The beast was destroyed for his defiance of heaven and burned in the burning flame of God's throne. Whew. Imagine that. The beast was arrogant 
probably there's no telling what was going on and what was said in that moment. But guess what? The beast was destroyed and didn't even get cast down to hell. But the Bible is teaching us here that he burned by he burned through the flame of God's throne. So that tells us right there that God's throne has some flames surrounding it. God's throne is un unlike any throne that we've ever seen before. And check this out. Dominion was taken away from the other three beasts, but their lives were spared. Now, I would think that the reason, because some of us may be wondering, like, wait a minute, it was four beasts. Okay, obviously one was arrogant and boastful, but why is it that the other three beasts, why is it that dominion was taken from them, but their lives were spared? I would say the reason that their lives were spared versus the fourth arrogant beast is because they weren't being arrogant. They weren't being boastful. They, they, they understood when they looked around, they understood where they were. We in the courtroom, I don't know about anybody else, but if I'm going to court for a crime that I know that I'm guilty of, I don't think that I'm going to be boastful and arrogant and talking crazy to the judge when I go in, because that only makes the sentence that I'm about to get even worse. The judge may have thought about giving me a lighter sentence, but because I'm coming in boastful, because I'm coming in arrogant and talking crazy. Now, I've literally ruined my chance of being able to get a lighter sentence. So God said, OK, even though you other three. Even though you all live bogus lives and y'all did things that were defined to me, guess what? Your lives were, will be spared because you didn't come in here arrogant. You didn't come in here boasting, but I'm going to spare your life, but I'm taking away your dominion. Sounds familiar. Sounds like what he did to Lucifer. Sounds more like what he did to Satan. He spared him, but he lost all of his authority. He lost all of his dominion and power. So. Here's what Henry, Henry Matthew Henry states. He says, perhaps Daniel's vision points out the destruction brought by the providence of God upon the empire of Syria or that of Rome for their tyrannizing over the people of God. So that's what he's saying. Further, the fourth beast is likened to be the Roman Empire's destruction after it began to persecute Christianity. So that's what Matthew Henry states. He says, in his opinion, the destruction is brought about from providences. It could have been brought about. It could have been Syria. It could have been Rome. The places that are represented that are being destroyed or they're losing their power. Because as you all know, Christianity, Christians were being persecuted by Romans. Christians were being persecuted by people in Syria. Christians were being persecuted in a lot of places that they were in. So do not lose hope because guess what? Even though you may be suffering today, God will repay. God will make every crooked road straight. Everything that happened wrong in your life, God is going to turn it around and make it good. So let's read verses 13 through 14 and then we'll almost be done. Amen. God bless you. So here's what it says. As my vision continued that night, I saw someone that looked like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient one and was led into his presence. He was given authority, honor, sovereignty over all the nations of the world so that the people of every race and every nation and every language would obey him. His rule is eternal. And it will never end. His kingdom will never be destroyed. Mm. So here we go. Here we here, here we see here. He says, I saw the night visions and behold, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came in the ancient of, to the ancient of days. And they brought him before they brought near before him. So that's what Daniel 713 says. So Daniel continues to watch the vision unfold in this moment. And he saw the Messiah who in the text was called like the son of man. And because he was made in the likeness of humans, as we see in Romans eight and three, he was found to have the appearance of a man as recorded in Philippians two, eight. Now seeing Christ as a man suggests his rulership on earth, where he was given glory, dominion and kingdom. It, see, it shows us that he is actually still looking and like he still has human form, not necessarily human body, because as we know, when you go to heaven, you get a new body. 
but he still had that same human form enough so to where Daniel actually recognized that fact. And he pointed it out. He said, see, he said, I see the son of man. The son of man was escorted up to the ancient of days. The ancient of days we know is God. So he saw that in his vision. And guess what? While the nations, while these four beasts were stripped of their dominion, while one beast had to burn up in the flame and the other three were stripped of their dominion, but they were allowed to live. He said that the son of man, when he approached God, guess what? He was given glory dominion and he was given a kingdom so when you come into christ when you accept jesus as your lord and savior when you come into the sonship of god guess what you get the same thing you get power you get dominion you get authority you get all of these things why because you and i are child are children of the most high god so the vision that Daniel saw in this moment brought comfort to him and his friends because it foreshadows the stripping away of power from the church's enemies and reveals that Jesus' dominion shall never pass away and the church will be forever victorious till the end of time. So after Daniel had this vision and the Lord had shown him that these principalities, these people that are wicked in high places, once he got the assurance from God and the vision that eventually they would be wiped away, he, he of course, now he and his friends feel much better about what they've endured. They feel much better about what they're going through and they feel confident that no matter what else they may face, that they will have the victory because the enemy's power, the enemy's authority is only going to last but so long. And the church will be victorious. The church will not be destroyed. The Bible tells us that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. I don't know about anybody else, but I think that that is the greatest news that I've heard in my whole entire life, that no matter what the enemy tries to do, no matter what fiery darts he tries to launch at you, the God that we serve said that we will be victorious. And eventually court is coming in session. Eventually, these same arrogant people, these same boastful people, these same wicked leaders are going to have to stand before the righteous judge. Some of them, really, if you want to look at their lifestyle, I'm sure that some of us know some people in authority right now that need to go stand before a real judge, a physical judge in this world. But somehow they've managed to avoid that court system. But there's one court system, no matter who you are, smart you are, how handsome or how pretty you think you are, there is one court date that you cannot and will not miss. You won't be late. You don't have to worry about if my car is going to start. You don't have to worry about if I'm going to have a continuance. No, you are going to have your day in court and you're not going to get a continuance. There is no do over. There is no go back and try to change it up and come back and we'll hear your case again. No, once the court is in session, once the ancient of days, once God enters the courtroom and sits down on the court is in session. At that point. It's already too late. You'll know, you got it. You can't do nothing but just wait for your name to be called. But the great news is, is that if you are a believer, if you are a believer that has been suffering, that has been going through, the good news is it won't last always. Eventually, the roles are going to reverse. Those that are arrogant and boastful, they're going to burn up in the fire. They may not even have to wait till they get to hell. Because as we just read, that fourth beast was set ablaze by the by God's throne, God's fiery throne. Amen. And the other three, they just lost their dominion. They lost their authority. They lost their power, but he spared them. My God, that goes to show that we serve a merciful God. He'll give you mercy if you want it. But you'd be surprised at folk who could care less about God's mercy. They're so arrogant and evil. They look like, look, Lord, I don't care about your authority. I don't care about who you are. And then God said, OK, there's a place for people like you. So this is the vision 
that Daniel had. This is the vision that he had that foreshadowed the stripping away of all of those who were in power. And we've read so many times in scripture where there were evil tyrants that were in power and God would humble them, God would strip them or God would take that, allow them to be killed or have something terrible happen to them because they have been putting pressure on his people. They have been ruling his people with arrogance. They've been ruling his people with ill intentions, evil intentions, whatever the case is, God will pay back every single wrong that was done to you. And I just need everybody to understand that today. God will pay back. Don't you worry about it. You stand still and let the Lord fight your battle. God probably has already given some of you a vision that he's going to make a way, that he's going to come into your situation. Have you ever been there before when you're going through a situation or you feel like giving up? You feel like there's no no other way. And then all of a sudden, God provides a way of escape. All of a sudden, God makes your enemies your footstool. That is what he was assuring David. That's why our lesson is called Daniel's. I mean, Daniel, I keep saying David. Daniel's vision of change. That's why it's called that. Because even though Daniel had just got out of the lion's den, he's tired. I'm sure he's frustrated. He's like, Lord, I even though you protected me, but man, I got thrown in the lion's den. I had to stay there all night. That could be exhausting to a person. And yet, right in that moment, right when he needed assurance most, God gave him a vision that things wouldn't always be the way they are. Then he assured him by letting him see a vision of Christ himself being escorted up to God by the angels and he given authority, power, and dominion. Everything that the arrogant leaders lost, God attained in that moment. I mean, Jesus attained in that moment. That's enough to thank God for right there. So that is our lesson today, a very short lesson today, few scriptures, few verses, but yet a very powerful thought-provoking lesson nonetheless. So I pray today that those of you who may be going through a trial, those of you who may be going through a storm, I pray that God gives you a vision that you're going to make it. And for those of you who have already received the vision that you're going to make it, I pray that God gives you the faith to know and believe and accept that no matter what, you're going to make it. I don't care what the enemy says, what he throws at you, you're going to make it. God is going to give somebody even today before you go to sleep, while you sleep tonight, God may give you, I pray that he gives you a vision of change to show you that what you've been going through has been all worth it this whole time in Jesus name. That is our Sunday school lesson today. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this lesson. We thank you for giving us visions of hope, visions of restoration, and visions of change. God, I pray that somebody watching this broadcast today, I pray that you would give them peace. I pray that you would alleviate every burden that's been holding them down, every weight that has been trying to weigh them down and stop them from running an effective race. God, I pray somebody that was wanting to give up. God, I pray that you give them a fresh anointing, pray that you give them fresh strength. In the mighty name of Jesus, we come against the enemy on every hand. We bind the devil on every hand. Spirit of the living God, we pray that you would rest, rule, and abide in us continually each and every day. And God, as we close out this broadcast, but never leave your presence, we ask that you would keep us in your jealous care. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. And every heart said together, amen. God bless you, Harvest of Faith. God bless you, YouTube listeners, Facebook viewers, wherever my voice is heard. I pray that God gives you a vision of change. And I pray that he gives you the faith to believe that it shall come to pass. In Jesus' name, God bless you. And we'll see you next week if it be the will of the Lord. God bless.